going to be the first oh, one. Here it comes. Uh, yeah, this is like the first um, painting club video. Um, basically, setting up an idea to try and get people motivated into painting the piles of you know unfinished miniatures that we all have lying around and try, and try to forget about. And uh, you guys should all know Nick, so I won't make him introduce himself. But why don't you tell him what you're working on, dude? Uh, I'm working on a questing night for the Sustainable Center's YouTube uh, Bretonian Army. And uh, this model is more of a pain in the butt than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to get a nice, like, Knight of the Realm where he's going to have armor and some colors, where this guy's got, like, a whole freaking backpack full of goodies. It's got all these, like, books and stuff. So a little bit more time-consuming than I thought, which is fine, but... I have not painted a cavalry model in forever. Yeah, I got, I got his um, whole unit peg knights. I got six peg knights. <laughs> and then, um, uh, like a hero paladin on, on a pegasus that I'm painting for him. How many uh, pieces is that all together you're doing? Uh, I've not actually opened it up properly and counted it, but it looks like about three or four pieces per peg knight. <laughs> so it's not actually too bad. Right. Um, I'm gonna That's go ahead cool. and just get the comments open just in case anyone wants to drop anything in. Um, yeah, I, I have sent uh, an invite out to everyone in the, the Warhammer YouTubers page. So, I mean, if if you're watching this and you're in there, then there should be an invite waiting for you to join. So feel free to to hop on if you've got painting to do. We're just gonna you know get some painting done, chat some hobby. Uh, I'm currently working on a demon print. Uh, I've got a tournament next weekend, so um, I've got to get this guy finished. And like a fool, I decided I was going to wet blend it. <laughs> so it took me like an hour to do one leg. But I mean, the the tournament I'm going to, they have they have an award for best single mini. So I, I suppose I should I'll put him in for that if, if he comes out looking good enough. Nice. How many uh, how many people in this tournament? Well, I'm quite disappointed because the the tournament originally is like set up for like 200. Like the the place where they host it is like massive. It's got it's like GW's own tournament. So you know they've got the facilities and, and the backing to put on a big show, basically. And only 69 people bought tickets. So. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, it kind of just shows how little people follow um, fantasy in the UK. I think at the moment, because a 40k event will sell all 200 tickets easy. Right, right. And you said it's at Warhammer World? Yeah, this is at Warhammer World. How far is that from you? Uh, 20 minute drive. Wow, that's awesome. So, like, yeah, that's like my local store. I mean, I'm quite lucky in that respect. That's pretty cool. I mean, and it's really awesome as well. Like, all, all the tables are, are, like, awesome. All the, the terrain's awesome. So, I mean, if you guys have watched any of my battle reports, you'll see, like, the. the terrain and the tables and stuff. Yeah, they got some cool stuff there. They've got all the models from White Dwarves showcased there too, right? Yeah. I mean, I had to, I had to work there as well. Um, oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm a... <laughs> I work for GW. Um, yeah, so up, like upstairs, they've got the, the Hall of Fame, which is like every heavy metal painted miniature ever. That's awesome. Well, of the current range, all like the the old ones are like in storage, but they're still lying around. I mean, the best thing about that as well is like the the editor White Dwarf basically just has a key <laughs> and can just go and get miniatures out of it and stuff. It's it's pretty insane. <laughs> That's awesome. But it, it's also quite funny as well. Like um, sometimes you can tell like what's going to be in the next White Dwarf because all the miniatures will be gone. Like the entire range will be gone, and it'll be taken away for photography. Oh, that's awesome! Are there any missing armies right now? To be honest, I've not been up there for a while and have a look, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. Um, but I mean, but some, that doesn't necessarily mean that obviously that army's coming out. It can be for any number of reasons, but sometimes you can get lucky and guess. Mm -hmm. Like, like not too long ago, like the entire tower range was just gone. Um, and then, and then, not too long after, you know, towers released. Right. And uh, so, and uh, not to get her excited, but um, 
around the same time all the Black Temple stuff was gone. So. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, I don't follow 40k too much. I, I was a massive 40k player until mm-hmm. until November last year, and then since then I've I've not even. I think I played like one small fun, fun game. Is that when the addition change went down? Um, no, the addition changed like in July, and I actually I just quite like the new addition, but some of the new books have just put me off. Gotcha. Like my 40k army is Tyranids, which mm-hmm. which is really difficult to play in, in the current meta. Just really difficult. And all the new books basically just screw over Tyranids like even more and more. So <laughs> I'm going to take a hiatus from 40k until the Tyranids get a new book. Right. I um I have a I have a uh, what is it? Oh, just a regular Space Marines army, and I haven't touched it in over a year. Yeah, I think the problem is, is I have a lot more fun playing fantasy. Like a lot Definitely. more. Fun. Yeah, I like how it plays better. Yeah, it's it's a much more engaging game system in my opinion. You know, you have to actually think more about what you're doing rather than just like pew 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 across the table. Definitely. Feel free to get, disagree with me, but that's my that's my experience. No, no, I I do agree. I uh, I feel like there's more strategy in fantasy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, this is why in 4K I played one of the weaker armies. I played Tyranids mm-hmm. just so I'd have some kind of a challenge. Right. I have to sort of think about what I'm doing, not just you know packing up as many guns as I can. And, you know. The only reason I ever even got an army is because I won it. I won like a Mega Four set, like a raffle. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was like a three hundred dollars set. Yeah, I've never won anything. Like I always see stories like, oh, like a friend of mine won a Mega Case. Nice. Another friend of mine won like a Battle Force and. I always show you like how the local GW was doing a competition where um, you get to pick, like, I remember this one time, you got to pick um, a battalion, you you, had, you could, I think you bought it for half price or something, and then the person that made the most models in a legal army out of that battle force got a prize, I got the money back or something, it was a pretty cool, like, idea anyway. That's different. It basically just encourage people to, like, first of all, buy a battle force, um, <laughs> but like to build and convert as many models as they could. So it's quite a cool idea. How much time did they give you? You got like half a day. Oh, okay. Uh, I think the, the guy that won it bought the Space Wolf one and just made like thirty-five Wolf Guard. It's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. That's a cool idea, though. Yeah, I mean, a, lo- a lot of these awesome ideas that you see out of stores just, just don't happen anymore. Right. Which is a shame. Like, I remember one, my local store basically had this massive cardboard box full of bits and basically said to people, like, give them a, like, a small plastic cup for £5 and you could fill it up with whatever you wanted out of the bits box. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and, and a friend of mine got 12 Grey Knight Terminators. Really? The old metal ones that were like sixty pounds for five. He got twelve for five pounds. That's so crazy. Yeah. yeah. He, he just sat there for like three hours just rooting through this box for all the bits he needed. Yeah, no, I did that once at a in a bits bin and I ended up finding like full trolls and stuff. Like when I brought it to the guy to check out, like he kinda had that look in his face, like, oh shit, I'm giving this guy like a nice chunk of stuff for like no money so like he didn't give me like the original rate he's like wow you're getting full pieces here so he yeah. like he actually charged me a little bit more than a bits price but whatever yeah and another cool thing they used to do was you could there's like a box full of sprues and you could come and take one of the sprues out of the box as long as you put one back in that was like of equal value <laughs> Say like you had like I don't know a space marine rhino on a sprue, but you wanted a space marine tactical squad, then you could come and drop your rhino in the box, mm-hmm. and then take the, the tactical marine sprues. Yeah, it's cool if you have like a battalion box, but you only want yeah A, that B, and C awesome from it. As well, like the the manager at my local store was really awesome. He, if you wanted a battalion, I remember a particular incident where a guy wanted a, a Tau battalion, the old one, mm-hmm. but he didn't want the recruit. 
from it. So you let him open the box, take the crew out, the crew out, and swap them for a, a box of fire warriors. Oh wow, which, which is pretty cool. Uh, I just I just don't see that happening much anymore. No, I feel like people are afraid to do that kind of stuff because it's just not selling in volume, or it's not as popular. Where those yeah. fun little those fun little gimmicky ideas end up uh, not being profitable, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's I think you're gonna get lucky when they're looking to get rid of old stock. Mm -hmm. Like if there's a massive build up of, um, you know, bits and stuff, they want to get rid of them. Right. <clears throat> Man, I'm using three paintbrushes at the moment. This is. <laughs> Did you get a lot out of the mini wargaming DVDs? Did you, you found it definitely beneficial? Oh yeah, for sure. It's definitely worth worth the download. I mean, it's free for starters, which made it even more awesome. Right. But I, I mean, I have no idea who who is the guy that did it. Uh, Chris something or other. Uh, okay. But yeah, his, his wet blending tutorials are really good. They're really simple to follow. Like, I'm really short as well. Like, uh, sometimes a lot of painting tutorials can be quite long and laborious, where these ones are quite well edited down, so they're quite short and to the point. Cool. <laughs> so it wasn't Dave or Matt, or was it someone else you said? Yeah, I think it was. Without opening up on my laptop and watching it, I couldn't tell you for sure, but I think it was someone from, like, um... They're, they're like affiliated with a com like a painting company. Oh, okay. But they, you know, they plugged quite a lot on their the YouTube channel on their website, and it, it's someone from them. Someone will probably be able to tell me in the comments if you know. You know what to do. I'm, I'm quite surprised there's not more people joining because there was like a few people. Well, yesterday there were a bunch of people. I know even Johnny Crass. He sent me a message and I read it, and then like. I was at work, so I didn't look back right away. I thought he was going to do something later that night, but he wanted to go right away. Uh, what did I just hear? I just heard noise. Oh, there's oh. chats. Yeah, that was just me. I just sent another invite out just to see if anyone right. waiting for another one. But sometimes when the first invite goes out and you, you don't initially get it, it, then it becomes like a dead link. Right. So, I don't know. So what do you think about the new high elves? I've not had a chance to play against them yet. I've played three games. Um, I did two in the basement with my friend, Rich, and I played Skaven, and I beat him the two times. And then I played once in that tournament at Sustainable Center's uh, shop, and I beat that guy too. That game in the tournament was interesting because he, he didn't have as many elves as I thought he would. Because he, he filled up his core with fifteen silver helms, which yeah I, I don't I don't know what, what do you, what do you think about that? I mean I understand why since you could have three ranks worth of support attacks with high elves now, but it was just such an interesting choice. Yeah, well I mean I've been saying to the guys around here that if I did high elves I would do the the cab list, but mm -hmm. that's that's just that personal preference. Whether it's the most competitive build or not, I don't know. But. Right, I mean it's a fun idea, but I feel like. If you don't get the charge off, you're screwed at it off the bat. But even with the charge, I think they're only strength five. So I mean, it's you get those five, fifteen strength five hits. But uh, I mean, after that, subsequent rounds, you get grinded down. I mean, it took me a while to kill them actually because of the armor. Yeah, I mean, but, I think a list like that is, you know, irks a lot towards like Bretonia. You need to play it well. You need to line up charges. Well, he didn't even have any heroes in it, so that's why it didn't yeah. even carry that much punch the, the extra round. Team, other than like the 15-man silver home bus, there'd be full command in the front rank, two awesome killy nobles either side, and then level four sat in the second rank. Right. Because then that unit would actually pack a punch, you know, give like one of them the Star Lance or, or whatever. Because high nobles being able to reroll to here are actually pretty killy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Which, I, I don't know. I don't know what to think about the book as a whole. I mean, you look at it and it seems really broken, but then if you take it apart a bit, it's kind of not. I don't think it is because if I haven't been able to beat them three times now, uh, I mean, I'd be complaining more. But uh, 
they're still easy to kill. Like, they're still only toughness three, five up armor elves. Like, you just got to play your cards right, I think. Yeah, I mean, the thing that bothers me with my warriors is they've got so much, like, anti magical attack stuff. Yeah, well, with warriors and demons, when you've got, you know, say your knights or your juggernauts and they've got magic attacks, that one banner is going to be a killer. Yeah. <clears throat> I've got a practice game lined up against uh, one of the guys that plays high elves the Friday before the tournament, so. Good, good. At least I can play it beforehand. And... Yeah, um, I'm still trying to figure out my my take on the Phoenixes. I mean, they're cool, but I mean, I played against each of them, and I was actually more afraid than I should have been because I played twice against two Fire Phoenixes. And as Skaven, when you have all those ranks, it's just scary as hell if they fly over you. Yeah. But I never even let them near me because I didn't push up too far. And the Doom Wheel keeps them pretty busy, so... Yeah, I mean, with that fire attack, do they have to be able to clear the unit? Or if they stop on the unit, do they automatically bump one behind it? When I played at the tournament, the guy compared it to um, something from the vampire accounts. I don't know. Oh, Is there... Yeah. The, the hex yeah, where you could just clip the corner and that's it, you hit them. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know any better. I don't know if that's how you do it or not, but I kind of just made it so uh, he just couldn't move over my unit. So Yeah, I mean, logic would say, maybe me being biased, but I'd say you have to be able to clear the unit. That's what I think. Because, but I mean, you know, the, the bird's flying over and dropping fire as he flies over. You know, he doesn't kind of fly up to you and fly it out. Right. You have to pass over to drop it on you, I guess. But maybe that might be me just being biased. And... No, I think I think that's how it should work. But I don't think it's very clear. Yeah. It's... But you can do it twice, though, right? If you use the magic phase. Yeah, I can see that probably getting FAQ'd out. Yeah. At the moment, you can do it twice. Like, rules is written. But I think they'll FAQ would say that it doesn't work. No, because again, even with Skaven, when you have so many ranks, seven, eight ranks, to take, was it D6 plus seven mm -hmm. D3? Like, yeah, it's a lot of, that's a lot of hits. There's a lot of straight four hits as well. Yeah. Um, but I mean, at least for Skaven specifically, if you can get the Storm Banner in your list, and it's a good way to fake out the opponent because you don't know, they don't know when you're going to activate it and it enables uh, or disables flying. Yeah. So. I mean, I think I, I watched your, your guys' videos when you did the review of the book and mm -hmm. he made a really good comment about how it makes me wonder like what the hell went on with the Warriors book. Oh my gosh. I'm, it makes me so upset. Yeah, the, I mean, the Warriors book in comparison to some of the new books that have come out, it's just like I don't know, man. It just seems so rushed. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely rushed. I. It upsets me because I don't think I'm going to be playing my Warriors that much because I feel like just based on the videos that I've seen on YouTube and actually playing, there's really so much, there's only a few limited builds that you can do, and even the Super Demon Prince one with the high with the um not Hydras the the, the, the what the guy yeah Chimeras and you know, uh, it just seems very fixed in how you got to play them. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at face value and you see, oh man, look at these awesome units. I can do so many different builds, but a lot of them just don't work. Right. I mean, I tried to make it work. Like, I did a list where I did uh, like three units of Chosen and a War Shrine, so you could just spam the Eye of the Gods bullshit. Yeah. But like, at the end of the day, it wasn't, it wasn't that worth it. I mean... The only reason why I won that game, it was a watchtower scenario. So I just put the best chosen in the building, and you can't beat them yeah. <laughs> when it's t 10 guys versus 10 guys. But I, I don't know. I mean, the rare choices, like the Vortex Beast and the Mutilith. No, the Mutilith, oh. vor Vortex Beast, and the, what's the other one? Slaughter Brute? Yeah. Oh, it's so bad. Yeah, it's I mean. So, so much potential. And yeah. It's so bad. So bad. I mean, I really feel like that book was just another. Let me see how I can, how how much stuff I can sell. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a book built around characters. 
which mm-hmm. is a shame. You know, the rest of the books could actually be pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I knew Marauders need to be fixed. Like, I knew they were a little broken in 8th yeah, edition. I, but... I, think, I think they went too far the other way, in my opinion. Huh? I think they would be made them too expensive, just slightly. Yeah. I know. I mean, at, at five points, they were ridiculous. But now at 11 points, they're just ridiculously the other way. They're ridiculously bad. Yeah. And, I mean, I had so many Marauders that I'm not going to use right now. At some point, I'll convert them into Forsaken, but even Forsaken, I, I still don't know if they're worth it. Yeah, I mean, I've got 50 Marauders with flails, and I'm, they're not painted, and I'm never going to paint them. No, yeah. Because I'm never going to use them. Well, having said that, I obviously used them in one of my battle reports. <laughs> um, and, and guess what? They were crap. Jeez. I don't know. And, like, the Forsaken, I want to use them for fun, but, I mean, it's just... It's just too random for an army that requires some stability. I mean, when I'm spending 20 points a guy, I don't want to have them screw up based on a D6 roll of what's their power this turn, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess the problem is, as long as Steadfast is a rule, Warriors are going to struggle. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Because their entire ethos is to beat people in combat. Right, and now you see the freaking unit of like 30 Warriors, which... To me, is not warriors. I mean, I liked seventh edition warriors. You brought t- units of ten and fifteen guys, and you did fine. Now you have to bring a lot of them to make it worth your while. You have to start hoarding warriors, and that's like I say, that's just not warriors. There's yeah, warriors. That just seems like elite empire. Mm-hmm. I just hate the horde rules to begin with. Yeah, I, I, I can buy that. I mean, I, uh, I just feel like it's less. The game is less tactical with these hordes because when you play, when you find a group of people that just play hordes, it's I don't know. The games just seem less have less depth to me. Yeah, because it's, it's just well, I'm gonna I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna push this massive unit across the table and you gotta deal with it. So. Yeah, I don't like that style at all. I'm a very seventh edition. I like seventh edition a lot in that matter. What's up, guys? I never actually played seventh edition. Uh, oh yeah. Got, I played fantasy in eight. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you know the the major um, differences between the two in combat? Uh, I mean, I know most of them. Uh, the other is where you kill the entire front rank, the other guys come attack back, and the, the unit that charged goes in first. Right. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they did fix the game a little bit with the the random charge. I like that. But uh, I don't know all the support attacks and the horde attacks and all this, you know, crap. It just, I don't know. It kind of ruined the game for me. I'm not going to stop playing because of it. I mean, I love the game and I've invested so much time and money into it. But that's just something I would have been happy without seeing. I think. Oh, I love I love throwing buckets of dice. Is Steven in or what? Yep, I'm in. I'm in. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Oh. Yeah, I think the good thing about like hordes is what Steven just said. It's, it's loads of dice, and that's always fun. A big handful of dice, throw them across the table. You know, that, that, that's always good fun. Yeah, totally. I mean, I only started playing hordes when one of our friends started playing them. I mean, we just never really transitioned out of, you know, small blocks of 20, 25, 30, just because we had our own little metagame, about five or six of my friends, we would just play each other. We wouldn't really play at any gaming areas. So, I mean, we never really got into the Horde play style. So once one of us did, we all had to, to just kind of deal with it. Because yeah. he plays orcs and goblins, and I couldn't figure out how to kill, like, 50 Savage Orc freaking uh, Horde. It was just very hard to do, except just redirecting them. But you can only do that for so many games. But you're going to do it for so long as well. I mean, orcs and goblins are like the masters of clearing up chaff. Yeah. They've got yeah. chaff themselves. They'll have like manglers. They'll have like goblin wolf riders. They've got doom divers. Mm-hmm. The chaff's just not going to last long at all. Going to right. So. So uh, what, what are you working on, Steven? I am putting together Phoenix Guard. Man, get the hell out of the combo, you cheap guy. <laughs> Oh no! Pile of cheese in here. Go away. <laughs> I can't hear him. 
I think you, you've clicked him on mute. A little um, message saying that you muted him. No, I tried to yeah. unmute him. Huh. That's weird. Well, let me see. I can't. Yeah. I, I can't say anything about Phoenix Cloud. I, I'm painting up a Nurgle Demon Prince. Mm. Oh, shit. Fucking wet blending, man. Can you, can you hear me out, Nick? No. Oh, well. Here's, here's a top tip, guys. If you ever decide to do wet blending, remember the paint stays wet and don't put your fucking finger in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hard to remember yeah. from wet blending. That, that, that's a top tip for wet blending. Fucking Actually, I, I blend in a little pot. So. Yeah, see, I've got my, I have three colors on a palette like this. And then I actually right. on the model. So I mean, I don't. You probably want to see because it's so so small. But that's like the half blended side, like the more blended side. I don't know. You can't really tell. The cameras are very good. Yeah, these webcams suck. It's, it's definitely worth it as a process. It just takes time. If you've got patience to do it, then. I don't know. So uh, we were just talking about high elves. I think we've got new high elves. What about the new high elves? Yeah. Well, what do you think about them? I think they're awesome. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun playing them. I didn't play them in seven, so I don't. I didn't have the OP book. I guess. I mean, I do want. In, in this book, some of the stuff that was overpowered, they kind of dealt with, like tech cliffs. I'm glad, right. they, I'm glad they sorted him out because he was ridiculous. He's still good, but he's not like ridiculous like he was. Yeah, I haven't I haven't used him, but I read his rules, and he has a couple amazing little abilities. Yeah, his, I still his, pick up, prefer the level four, the Book of Hoa. His whole, his whole ability to, uh, what is it, take one spell out of each lore? That's yeah, that's crazy. Cool. He gets to just pick it? Yeah, he get, he's like he's like a pseudo lore master. To start the game, you pick one spell from every lore. Yeah. <laughs> so you just like tailor make your magic plays uh -huh. with everything you need. It's pretty cool. I mean, the, the main thing about him is he, he lost his ability to force any doubles. Yeah. But, okay, he can still do it for one turn, right? He can, do, but then he's strength and toughness one for the rest of the game. Yeah, I mean, he's strength and toughness two anyway, so I'd probably still do it in in that one key magic phase. You say he's toughness two? Yeah, he's strength and toughness two. Oh, really? Is. Yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> he, he, he always was. That was his one weakness. I could just wither him off the table. Yeah. That's why I used like the old um, Wars of Chaos spell with the leper. Because on an average roll, he's dead. Is it? See, I'm going to have to look that up, though. That would be, that's weird. What's that? I just think that's weird that he, he... I didn't know he was strength and toughness, too. Yeah, well, he's like... I mean, fluff-wise, he's like the, the uber wizard. He's not... Yeah, he's level. He's a level 5 wizard, so... Yeah, like, like Tyrion, he's like the, the uber fighter. And then... Yeah. Technus is like the uber wizard who's a little bit of a pansy. <laughs> it it kind of makes sense, fluff-wise, that he's, he's really crap. Stat-wise, but he's awesome that he's magic. Well, this shit is strength and toughness too. Yeah, Tyrion. Uh, Tyrion's even got four wounds. Yeah, Tyrion's a badass. I think he mischief ten. I guess there. Yeah. He's a he's a tank, man. But he, he's a lot of points, right? He's like what, nearly five hundred points. Yes, I believe so. He's the best part of five hundred points. 
He's 410. Techless is 450. I guess we don't need to talk about the final of those that one. We'll just leave that alone. That's just so stupid. What's stupid? The final of those that one. You know, I've only used it in one game and it didn't even um, come into effect. It, it's very match dependent, I think. Like, when, when I take with my Warriors, like, the, that unit terrifies me because pretty much yeah. everything. Everything that matters in my army has magical attacks. Even yes, it does. The skull crushes. You know, it's like my, my death magic. Everything has magical attacks, so that it scares me. But I, I just uh, dreaded thirteenth the the unit off the board. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that uh that doesn't cause wounds, does it? Yeah. No, and it doesn't. Uh, yeah, you don't get the. Any save from the spell, so yeah. A lot of people are trying to say that because it's a, a magical attack, they take take a two up ward. But yeah, but that's yeah, that's not how the the thing reads though. It says wounds. Yeah, the spell specifically says no saves of any kind. So, like, I'm just gonna purple on it. You know, sixes. You're gonna purple on it. <laughs> yeah. Because like the way it reads is uh dwellers. So it can't stop that either. Yeah, because if models are dead, you don't get a ward save against it. Right. Yeah. I don't the know. Worst, the worst part of hobbying for me is putting shit together. Yeah, it's amazing how long building takes. It takes longer than painting, I think. For me, it does. Building shit, man. I managed to get ten of these guys together over the last two days. Life and getting away or just laziness? What? Is that is it life getting in the way or is it just laziness? Um uh, I don't know, both, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really struggle to paint and stuff because I have this really like bad condition in, in my hand. It's called laziness. Yeah. <laughs> Chronic laziness. I've got that twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at, at some point I really want to play high elf. I'm going to avoid or cost the cheesy build. I want to run the cab list. No, I'm not going to take the Bunny World Dragon. I'm not going to take High Magic. No Phoenixes. You know, I, I would have never actually picked these guys up, but the owner of the game store I go to was like, Hey, Steve, you want to buy my 2,500 points of old metal high elves for 100 bucks? And I was like, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, how do you pass that up? By having respect, it's saying you won't play the army. <laughs> oh, you shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> some, sort of, some sort of dignity. <laughs> David over here has got nothing to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know you, like, you say you play in like a, a small closed meta, but the tournaments I've seen, man, some of the Skaven lists are just horrible. It's so, so broken. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't know what I'm going to bring. I mean, it's about to 2,000 points. You can run double help it. It's just crazy. Yeah. Well, the competition, they comped the help it only won a list. Um, yeah, a, lot, a lot of places will do that. It needs to be done. Yeah. But, but for a 2,500-point list, I can get two Doom Wheels, a help it, and a Lightning Cannon, all for 625 points. That's just disgusting. <laughs> I think for me what makes it worse is the fact that like strength in numbers stacks with your rank bonus and stuff, so you get like leadership ten slaves. Yep. And all of a sudden you get these like two point guys that become the bravest thing in the fucking universe. Right. Um a lot of a lot of people that say the book is broken. I don't. I don't think the book is broken. It's just eighth edition that broke it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can kind of buy that. 
like Stead, if Steadfast wasn't there and Hordes wasn't there, like the book would be totally different. I mean, the one thing I find from Skating Play is they all say the same thing. Like, oh man, this never happens. You know, when, they're, when they're, the random stuff just kicks around off the table, it's always, oh, this never happens. This has right, never right. happened before. But yeah, whatever. <laughs> This engineer with a doom rocket's a fucking sniper. Oh yeah, that thing is uh there's a lot of underpriced shit in the book. Yeah. I mean the uh the banner I always use, the plague banner, it was just not meant for eighth edition with support attacks and always always strike back in combat. Yeah. Like it was just not meant for that many attacks. Yeah, can you what's the plague banner? Someone lets you re roll to hit into wounds, right? Yeah, like for thirty points, I can re-roll so many attacks and so many wounds. It's just silly. It's like they're high elves. <laughs> I tell you, re-rolling everything with the high elves, um, it kind of feels like cheating sometimes. Definitely. It really does. That's why the high up covers can be quite good because you, you don't sort of that rubber lance in there. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a that was a problem I found with my Bretonians every once in a while. You charge your most expensive knight unit in there and then all of a sudden they're like, Yeah, I only hit three times. Yeah, so Bretonians just suffer it so much because they have like no way of getting rerolls. At least the Empire can get the warrior priests and stuff. Yeah. But Bretonians get nothing, they they got crapped on. I just want to come back to the Bang of World Dragon real quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Once um, applied to be um, a game designer for the interview. Uh, and sort of the pseudo interview, like, they give him this character and they have to write rules for him. Mm hmm. So it's pretty cool. It's like, like an interview technique. You know, like, this is a character, create a rule set for him. So, like, he made this guy, he was fairly balanced, blah, blah, blah. And he had this one item that gave him. For one turn, you got a two plus one save, um, and then the feedback we got from that was like two plus one saves are a massive no-no. We we can't have people having two at ward saves, and then you see him all over the place. Yeah. So they just ignore their own advice. <laughs> well, I think uh, Matt Ward is allowed to do things other writers aren't. He's like, you can't make a two plus word save. I can't. Yeah, nothing should have a two plus word save ever. It doesn't make sense. Well, it's better than the seventh edition of like immunity to stuff. That's true too, but you're saying for like what the the uh, the dragon princes? The dragon princes and their immunity to fire. Um, what is it, the the old uh, banner sorcery or whatever it was the one that, that made it the, so the unit was immune to magic wasn't it was it the old banner of the world dragon yeah I mean, that, I mean the old one was fairly balanced because it made it so you couldn't be augmented as well as hex so it kind of balanced itself out what wasn't it how many points was it was like a hundred yeah I mean that's seventy five points and you like you, no magic worked on you, so you couldn't throw like Occam's on that unit. You couldn't right. put like Throne of Violence on that unit because it just didn't work. So right. Fairly balanced. You couldn't be hurt by enemy magic, but you also couldn't be fucked by your own magic. All right. I well, mean, I guess just... the, the, the high elves that I played played it wrong on because they were still casting all their buffs and shit. On. Well, I'm pretty sure that's how it was. Um, I never played high elves, so I don't know. I played against them. Me too. And, and that, that's how we played it when we had it. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. It doesn't matter now because that book is I've just found that a, a lot of the people, now that I'm making battle reports, people either that I usually play either don't want to be in the battle reports or I'm finding out they're cheating. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how you put stuff up and then stuff that you missed everyone else will notice. 
Yeah, I mean, it's like my Vampire Account player playing his Mortis engines to where their fucking uh, regen was stacking. And, like, towards the end of the game, he had his whole army with a four-up regen. I'm like, damn, it's a hard fucking army. And, uh, yeah, they don't get that. <laughs> no, I've learned so much after starting to put videos up because since I wouldn't play different people, we'd get some rules wrong and consistently have them wrong. Right. And, like, once throwing the video up and everyone's like, no, it's this way or that way. I mean, as long as they did it in good manner, I didn't give a shit. There was a couple people that were just kind of like, you fucking asshole, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't understand people that comment on a video like that. Or your video sucks. It's like, then don't watch it. <laughs> go, or go make your own and try to do yeah. it better. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Not one to shy away from that negative feedback, but at least do it in a... You know, yeah, like I want to, if I'm doing something wrong, I want to know, but just do it politely. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. What do you need my help with? Feel free to join. Who? Uh, Mr. Chewie sent me. He's uh, trying to call I'm just going to invite, so if you're watching this or whatever, feel free to join. We're just chatting and painting away. The human face is looking pretty cool now. I'll, um, I'll have to get some close up shots of it. See what I got so far. Uh, uh. So, like, what, what's your technique for painting it? Are you just going to. Like uh, yeah, I'm keeping it simple. <laughs> I don't think he wants a crazy paint job anyway for these guys. <laughs> I, I sent him a message saying, like, straight up, like, you know, I'm going to, like, paint the shit out of these guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I hope you're ready to, like, use Golden Demon and shit. Cause I <laughs> That's awesome. Um, he, he didn't ever send anything back, so I'm, I'm assuming he's okay with that. Although I'm, I might get to painting one and think, fuck this, layer of wash, <laughs> wash dry brush, get them done. All right. Does he even play Peg Knights? Like, no, I don't think so. He, he's like, he's a real disdain for them. But maybe he, he'll learn something. You better play him now since you're painting him. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't really mind him if you can play him. He's All right. Oh, that's so disgusting. Yeah, so I think you can grab them too with the demon things. I hope you can see that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, those look cool. Yeah, can you see that? I'll take it with the screen. Man, it's too snowy. It's a background. I can't get it big screen. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I'm wet blending this guy. It's just a matter of going back and forth and blending it one way and blending it back. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, how many birds do you have in your house? Oh, you guys hearing my birds? Yeah, that's pretty much all I can hear. I will close my window. How about that? They are fucking loud. I just have I have a bunch of fruit trees in my backyard. <laughs> so they're all like, yay, fruit. <laughs> so what time is it where you guys are? It's uh, 2 o'clock. Uh, 5 o'clock. What's a 10 by you now? Yeah, 5-2. Yeah, come on, Mr. Chu Center, join. I'll send the invite again. Isn't it, like, isn't it like his 14th birthday today? <laughs> <laughs> no, tw 12, I think. <laughs> oh, 
I don't know. It, I think it's quite good to see how many like new channels are popping up as a result of the what we do. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy about it. I, mean, I, I I've had my channel for ages, but since that, I've got like so many more sort of traffic to it and stuff. But it's also really more inclined to actually post stuff. Yeah, I don't know what came over me. I've had my channel since like 2005, and then. I just decided to start producing videos this year. Yeah, nice. I think you, you get a bit of like, I don't know, like an ego boost when people watch you and comment on it and stuff. It makes you want to it's do true. It. It, make, it makes you feel better. Well, it's like, it kind of makes you feel like that, that time wasn't wasted. Like, if, if one person watches my battle report, then it's like, I I mean, it's just good that even you have a catalog of yourself, so like 10 years from now, if you want to go back and just watch some games or something, at least yeah. you have it. Yeah, what's up, dude? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, my 12th birthday there, you lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah. Is that happy, okay? happy birthday. You're oh, finally yeah. a teenager. <laughs> happy birthday, dude. It's not my birthday. Oh, I thought it was. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> why did you? Why did you come up with that assumption that it was his birthday? They get so some it's their own joke they believe it. <laughs> he said something about a, a birthday dinner or something like that. Oh yeah, not for me. Whatever. <laughs> I just like that every hangout event is a birthday, like a cupcake or something. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Warhammer Hangout Cupcake. I can guarantee you guys I'm going to get disturbed at least two or three times during this, but uh, I'm still have to mute it. No, what I should be doing right now is editing my latest battle report, but I've decided I wouldn't <laughs> come on here instead, so I'll only be probably here for about half an hour. Nice. What uh, what army did you are you reporting? Uh, dwarves for this one, and then I got a couple of vampire counts ones. Nice. I'm, uh, right. I'm putting off doing the vampire counts ones because that means I've got to paint the necromancer for the uh, thumbnail. Sweet. <laughs> don't want to do any more painting. Bad enough after my dwarfs for a bit, I think. <laughs> uh, I've not been able to get into gaming for like two weeks. Oh, really? Well, yeah, I've had, I've had exams and schoolwork to do, so. Yeah. Gotcha. That's, it is all about college at the minute as well. Yeah, well, it's for my degree, which is kind of like even more bullshit. School schoolwork? What's that? I'm coming up on my 20 year uh, high school reunion. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, in like three years. It's like like my university is just not school. But it's kind of it's still kind of just school. Oh school. Yeah. I, I got into a mad conversation the other day saying about how, like, be if you could do, like, a degree on Warhammer. Oh, that'd be awesome. Right. You can get a degree on anything. People give degrees in religion. So, I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should, like, go and, like, pitch it to my the head of my, like, university and be like, hey, man, this is a, a worthwhile course. Hey, if they run room in studies at that place, I mean, they'd be bound to accept it. <laughs> Women's studies. <laughs> how how to get a degree in complaining? Complaining <laughs> <laughs> and shopping. Women's studies. It's a thing. It really is. That's crazy. Like, what, what do you what do you tell a woman with two black eyes? <laughs> well, Nothing. You haven't t told her twice already. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I think if any one of my 5% women demographic on my videos are watching this, they're not going to be too happy. Uh-oh. 5%, that's optimistic. <laughs> no, I, I checked it. I checked it. Uh, I have 1%, and I'm pretty sure it's just girl painting and, like, Tommy Berry or something. What's her name? Uh, Joey, 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 Joey Berry. Yeah. Joey Berry. I've been meaning to check other channels out, but I'm subscribed to about 40 Warhammer channels and I've got a backlog of that that's extending for weeks that I need to go and watch. <laughs> yeah, I I'm subscribed to loads. I just see it. I don't subscribe to it. 
The only people I watch are the people that comment on my videos. Mm. I tend, if I watch people, I tend to drop a comment in on every one of their videos. Yeah. I usually do. Yeah. I mean, I comment on both your guys'. Yeah. So. Yeah, thanks. And you guys, yeah. I always appreciate the comments in return, especially when you point me doing something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I... When I the first time I watched one of your videos, I was like, "What is that noise?" And I guess it's all the birds. That's yeah. all I heard. But you can tell if I'm playing at night or during the day. If I, yeah, exactly. How many, how many how many birds and what type of birds are there? Because <laughs> the the mockingbirds like to come out at night, and they're mm. they're a different whole different level of noise. And it's just because you've got fruit trees. Pretty much. Yeah. Something interesting happened to me, though. Uh, yesterday, I think it was. A viewer asked me where I played uh, my Warhammer games. So I sent him a link to uh, Google Maps and stuff so he could type it in and find it. So that would be pretty cool if, if he was to come down. We could get a game against the viewer. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to happen yet. but Since, since the uh, Warhammer um, Google or whatever group started, I've gotten three games out of it. Wow. That's, That's pretty cool. Yeah, I've not, I've not got any. I don't know if there's anyone nearby me. Yeah, me too. I think maybe, I don't know, what that one person I did send the links to, he said he got the message, but he didn't reply, so I'm not entirely sure. Where, whereabouts is local to you? Local. Um, yeah. Those clubs are like a between a five or ten minute drive. No, but like, like what area is it? Oh, oh I'm in uh, Birmingham. Oh, cool. So you're not too far away from me, though. No, I don't know. Where, where are you again? I'm in Nottingham. Oh, okay, yeah. No, that is pretty far away. I mean... Your guys' whole country isn't very far. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure when I, went, when, when I went to the tournament <laughs> where Anthony was, the Sustainable Center, I'm pretty sure I drove the distance of Great Britain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably. Well, okay. <laughs> No, speaking of that uh, Google Plus page, though, it is, it is a cool page. I've uh, seen a lot of people there that I didn't even know were subscribed to when I ha hosted that uh, subscriber event where anyone could just come and join. Yeah. I posted, like, a lot of warning in advance, and we got 10 people straight away. And the people there that knew me, who I didn't know, and I felt kind of awkward not knowing them. But that, <laughs> that was fun. Oh, you got, you got 10 people in on that chat? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Should have come down. Well, I'm going to host another one soon. I'll uh, give you another advance notice. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just know for some reason I wasn't able to do it that day. I got into it, but I, I had to leave it like like 10 minutes into it. <laughs> we had Matthew Reeson that was there, and he was cooking the whole time. And he, he was, was cooking. cooking these amazing looking meals. And I said I'd go and get some food an hour in because he was making me hungry. <laughs> and it was three hours. I was starving by the time it finished. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, um, me and Johnny Kress are always on hangouts with him, and he's cooking the whole time. Hmm. Was he a chef? Yes, he is. All right. He's the, he said he was the only one in the kitchen where he was at, so he didn't look that crazy. Just talking to himself. No, it's just he just cooks at a local pub. Is what he told me. Hmm. And he just chills on hangout. Yeah, he'll be on his phone hanging out with us. That's awesome. While he's cooking. Yeah. Hey, he's like, look, he's like, look, at, look at these croutons I made. I'm like, oh, you bastard. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You ever um, in a hangout like that? I'll, I'll join. Send us an invite. We tried to get you guys in, you into the last one. The last one? Yeah. When, when was that? Uh, probably I wasn't there. Yesterday? Uh, uh, yeah, I remember that. I was fishing all day. Yeah, I, I was I was working, so I can make it. It's not paying my attention in this place. I thought to myself, right, we're going out at uh, what was it? It was like six o'clock. We were supposed to be at this birthday meal that I was going to today, and uh -huh. I thought to myself, oh, I'll make it back by nine. Yeah, there was like thirty of my extended family there, and uh, we we didn't make it back by nine. Of course not. Yeah. Spend ten minutes talking to each one. You're not going to make it back by midnight. <laughs> yeah. 
There were some people there I didn't I didn't speak to at all. I felt bad, but whatever. Whatever. Yeah, I've, I've got loads of painting to do, so I was just going to ruin this for until my eyes give out, basically. Yeah, until your laziness kicks in. <laughs> uh, I, I'm way holding the laziness back at the moment. It may. Well, the, the helpful watch of beer. Hmm. So, well, I'm, I'm down to sit here and assemble these guys until the fights start, so. Because you got that, that free UFC card on, on TV today. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I'm definitely not passing that up. <laughs> Who's fighting? Uh, Big Nog versus uh, Fabricio Verdun. Sweet. Is the main event. That question comes from someone that knows nothing about UFC, I just thought I'd ask. Ah. Yeah, so I tried to create a blogger profile earlier today. And, uh, oh, I saw that, yeah. Yeah. If you ever tried to link your Google Plus to YouTube, I know Anthony, uh, Anthony as it's meant to be said, um, uh, Meloria, they're all having problems linking their YouTube account. I, I did it seamlessly, so I don't know what their problem yeah, is. That, mine's linked up fine, I don't know what the problem is. Yeah. Bloggers are, bloggers are pain also. It's one of those subtle pain in the asses. It's like, oh, well, if you want to do it on this one account, you have to make it the default account. Therefore, your YouTube account can no longer be your default account. So it's, it's one or the other, and I'm, I'm not having that. Google just might, wants to make everything Google, but does it Yeah. Help? Well, I've, I've even heard rumors that like they're going to end YouTube so that they can just host everything on Google Plus. Wow, really? That wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me either. I think it'd be a mistake, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. yeah. When Google Plus first came out, didn't they limit its members to something ridiculously small? And so then everyone who joined, everyone joined from like random places. They only, yeah, they only they only sent out like like a hundred invites, and then those people could invite people. And then it was invite only. It went to like yeah. um, well-known internet IT bloggers, and then it got got like further down through there. Like my one of my friends is like a web designer. And he got like one of them. Yeah, like my one of my buddy's dads is a um, programmer at Adobe, so he sent me an invite early on. Oh wow! But I didn't take it. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm still on MySpace. I don't get this. MySpace. <laughs> Jesus, man. That it was a while. Bad. It was a while ago, all right. He's nice. doing better, man. Uh, well, a while ago, about ten years ago. It was well. It was before Facebook was out. So yeah, it was a while. Ago. Yeah, I, I can't stand social networking. The only reason I have the Google Plus is for the Warhammer YouTubers thing. And it should go for anyone watching this. So if you hate it the same way I do, it's worth it for the Warhammer YouTubers page. That thing's pretty. Cool. Yeah. What is all that noise? Is it me? What? What noise? I, I don't know. I just hear noise. Yeah, there's just, there's like a lot of background distortion going on. I was gonna say my window's closed, so I can't even hear the damn birds. What other wild animals do you have over there? <laughs> Dogs and cats. Oh, that's right. You got a cat. Usually walks around. Yes. He, when he's not busy uh, knocking my like, models off the counter, he's <laughs> usually off sleeping somewhere. That cat's distracting as hell. I just remember in the last hangout that we were, we were doing, it came on the screen twice and started just strolling around, and I lost my train of thought both times. <laughs> That's what he does. That's why I'm glad I just have a dog that sleeps like all the time. <laughs> yeah, me too. Literally just like in my ear. Hey man. I just dropped one of the arms to my phoenix door. Sword 
Yo, these Bretonian models are terrible. Are you painting one up for Anthony? Yeah. I should just I should just send him one of my painted up nights. <laughs> You'd never know. <laughs> They're like actually it's like actually not fun to paint. Yeah, dude. I've had the same army since those models came out in two thousand two, and uh -huh. the majority of them are still unpainted. Oh jeez. And I really like the army. It's you a cool concept too. Yeah. You didn't think Ant was doing it because it was a cool opportunity for you guys, did you? No matter how much spin he put on it, he is making you pay this models. Yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've got six peg nights to pay for him. Oh my gosh. It was a, it was a smart idea, too. He, he totally went out on a limb and everyone was like, yeah, I'll paint, I'll paint your army for you. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love how he was like, and I'll even pay for shipping. I was like, no shit, you're getting free painting <laughs> No, he would have to point that out because uh, it cost me something like £40 to get my item from him through customs. Yeah, same. What? Uh, I sent him a message and say, hey, dude, there's tax to pay. <laughs> yeah. He paid it, though. He, he was cool about it. Like, Really? Yeah. I didn't have the heart. The guy paid $70 to get it to me through, like... Dude. Delivery I trip. sent I sent a bunch of chaos shit to England and it only cost me twenty five dollars. Yeah, the the um the delivery receipt on my box was fourteen dollars ninety cents. Wow, you guys got lucky. I, I clearly didn't. I think I, I think we just know how to like shop for better deals. <laughs> not, not go to FedEx. Well, I think the problem is in the UK is we have like one single mail service, so they charge whatever they want. Yeah, and it's it's like um border like border force. It's not. I don't think uh, Royal Mail. It's customs. Yeah, well, if it's going outside the EU, you've got to pay like a shitload of tax on it. Yeah. Wow. Just another. You can always just you can always just do what I did, and I said there were uh, baby rattles inside. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. doing my research on it, and people said customs is a lottery. It's like you, you can get it through there with nothing. You can undervalue your item by hundreds, and they won't check. But on the off chance that the guy who's checking it's bored that day, he'll open up your item completely legally and then charge you for it when you've undervalued it. Right. If, if that's how it seems to work. Well, Majesty's revenue and customs. <laughs> Thing is, if I had been honest with it, it would have been easier instead of sending the guy the Hell Cannon. It would have been easier and cheaper just to order it on GW.com and then having his shipping address as the uh, the uh, end deal. That's awesome. And then we would have both had one for the same price of shipping with FedEx. <laughs> there was a Google scandal, something about them not paying any taxes over in this country for one reason or another and it was the same week or the same day even that I had to pick up my parcel after paying 40 pounds in this customs charge and so I thought to myself Google are doing, doing something right I mean I don't care they've got all this scandal about them in the media I just had to pay 40 pound in tax these guys aren't paying anything what's the secret <laughs> you got nothing I got a letter from the HMRC today and I owe our government 84 pence in, over, <laughs> in overpaid tax. So they are, they're cracking down. They oh, are, God. They are, they are pulling in the pennies. They're just forgetting about the billions that are still out there. <laughs> <laughs> and they wonder why we're in a recession. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, so you know, you'll be glad to know that I, I've cleared my debts with our, you know, our Majesty's government. Oh, did you have to take out? Did you have to take out a loan for the eighty-four pence? Dude, dude I, I had to walk the streets. I had to climb that street corner and sell my ass for that. <laughs> it, it cost them more to send you that letter than it did. For you. It did. Like, That's the worst thing. Like oh, the, the print the letter and posting it out would have cost more than eighty-four pence. The oh. No, I'm, I'm just saying the amount of time it took. Whatever. Um, you know, like typist or whatever, like actually had to sit there and like put in your name was worth more than eighty-five cents worth of like time. Yeah, to pay that person. Yeah, that, that's that's like working your way backwards out of debt. 
Did no one tell you how like how we're like a backwards third world country? Did no one tell you that? <laughs> I think I'm breaking the rules. It's not a because I'm not painting in the painting club. I'm modeling. I'm modeling too. Should we be banned? Probably. I should be banned from everything just for being a jackass. <laughs> I guess I need to rename the name of the then to the hobby club. But then that joke wouldn't be funny. <laughs> Painting Club Episode 1. I just noticed that. Yeah, I like literally sent a message out like five minutes before you sent yours out. So that was convenient for me. Which message was that? What? No, I, I put up a post saying I'm going to be chilling and painting if anyone wants to hang out. And then like five minutes later, there's a Episode 1 Painters Club. <laughs> Yeah, I put like the invite up like a few days ago on the page. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah pay attention, Nick. Oh, I totally did. I thought it was just coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the event's been created on the page for a while. I, it's more to motivate myself and help other people. So it's kind of then crazy. again, I messaged Nick like I don't know a week and a half ago, and he just got back to me today. <laughs> I just saw it. I haven't sat on Google, or I haven't, like, I don't know. My homepage hasn't been Google, so unless I make myself go there, I haven't been looking. Right. And I saw I had, like, a bunch of, like, missed hangouts, and, like, the other day I was driving, and for some reason my phone decided to... Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, well, I hear his noise. Uh, my phone decided to uh, start working with Google or whatever, and Johnny Crass was doing, like, a test run, and, like, I'm in the middle of driving my car, and... It just keeps ringing and ringing. So I threw him up on the dashboard, and he's like, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. I guess he was just trying to get the Hangout to work. Yeah, that was that was the one that he and I were in that kept failing. Oh, really? Yeah, dude, like, you, if you look on his channel, there's, like, eight or nine failed Hangouts because yeah, Google was having a problem with us. I feed, and I was like, what the hell is he doing? That was that was me and him trying to get their Hangout to run. Uh, but, I'm just, uh... Go there. Just avoiding that altogether. I'll show you guys some work in progress on the demon prints. Ah. I think you can see that. Damn, you really wanted to get those abs going, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, I am Sir Crunches. You've got to extenuate the musculature. Yeah. Hey, if you could do that on yourself, gyms would be our business. Just yeah, sit no shit. Just, just, just wet blend a six pack onto myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 there's some painting condition that can make some money. <laughs> so I take it you're going with Nurgle with your uh, demon prince? That's, what, is, is there any, any other marks? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't realize there was any other choice. Well, I, I do seem. I do seem to remember taking some flack when I said Phoenix Guard, and you were like, "Oh, that's cheese." And I, I, I did say I can't say anything with my noble demon prince. I, <laughs> I, I straight up admitted that this guy's broken as hell. So. <laughs> and he's still not a large target, right? No, he's not a large. Well. Target. If he was, that would be even worse because he's broadcasting his leadership over a larger range, then, isn't it? That's true. Yeah, I mean, small arm spiders in this sort of mother room, so get in But it, isn't the demon prince in demons, though, a large target? No, he's not a large target. Oh, he's not? The, the greater demons are, but the demon prince isn't. I don't understand why he's not a large target, though. Well, because he's obviously a medium target. <laughs> yeah, I think it's more. You want to play this where he's like an oversized man rather than like a monster. Yeah, who who cares if like a tree man who's the same size is a large yeah. target? I mean, come on, fluff. Well, fluff doesn't make a difference, man. No one cares about fluff. Well, except for everyone but GW. Yeah, well, yeah. Dude, this game doesn't have to make sense. People don't care. Oh, yeah. You can't bring logic to Warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> 
I tried. I tried that once. No. You, we can. Everyone in the argument can completely agree that it there is no logic in Warhammer Fantasy. But no, it, honestly, the, the, I suppose the argument is like it's a fantasy world. Like <laughs> it's not supposed to make sense. Where giants with the pride of a forest and ogres that are just eccentrified fat men have the same movement speed. Yep. I mean, the thing that gets me, like, about the Wars of Kess book is, like, how bad Archeon is. Like, this, yeah. we're talking about, like, the War Master of Chaos. He's, like, Fantasy's version of Horus in 30k. Right. He is bad. <laughs> for what he should be, fluff wise. <laughs> well, you gotta think, he did get killed by a Black Orc. And he didn't get killed, Grimgore just nutted him to the ground. So. He didn't kill him. He, you gotta, you gotta think that's gotta be able to be represented on the table, and Grimgore is not that good on the tabletop. I don't know. Four strikes for strength eight. That's not bad. It's true. I should probably just shut my mouth now. <laughs> I, I, he also, I, he also has a one-up rerollable save too. I don't think it's rerollable, but he has a one-up. He's got a one-up and a five-up, but I don't think it's rerollable. Why is there a dude with a gas mask on in here? What's up, dude? Mr. Balderson. I wish I knew how to pronounce that first name. Hey, how's it going? I think you're talking. Uh, there's a red microphone symbol towards the top of your screen, the top right. Click that and you'll be able to speak. Okay. Yay, it works. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello. hello. Hi, guys. What's going on, dude? <laughs> I worked. Perfect. What are you working on? Um, it's gonna go for a second, guys. Another warrior. Wow. There go. Yeah. But really, yeah. Wait a second. Oh, that was cool. Oh nice. wow, those are awesome. Yeah, those are pretty nice. cool. Say something, dude, so it goes into the big screen. Yeah. I'm just having to do like two more rings and then I'm done. And the demon prince. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to wet brush that. Wet blend. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that Nurgle guy. That is pretty cool. The Cromlech -like dude. That's cool. Thanks. I'm not going to show you guys anything else because I'm not proud of it anymore. I'm not worthy. <laughs> no, I, I thought I did this great job making a, a Frost Heart Phoenix. And then the instant I was like, I was like about to finish it. I look on and there's Kieran Dunleavy's video for his frost heart, and I was like, "Oh, you bastard!" <laughs> oh, I saw that your titled video <laughs> made me laugh. Oh, yeah, yeah the, out of one kit or something. He used a bunch of kits to make the second one. He used the parts of the um, the sky cutter and parts of the eagle noble. Cool. And here's everybody's favorite cat. Hey, bro. How you doing? Oh, cat ass, dude. <laughs> Guy put a pencil sharpener in the, in the camera. <laughs> no, they're, they're electric pencil sharpeners. You can get Okay, so here's something we can talk about. What do you guys want to see in like ninth edition fantasy? Oh my god! This will pass in time. Well, I actually, I would like them to keep eighth around for a while until they get all the books out. But that's right. not going to happen. No. I would like to see the ninth edition book not cost a hundred dollars. Because we all know it's going to be ridiculously priced. I think. 
there's something I was discussing the other day, is how we've got the laser sniping cannons right now. We've got the ones that... Uh, oh, what the heck is go. I think the way to solve that, and I might go into more detail in this in like maybe a video or something, what if you had a system where you'd roll a D3 with your first artillery dice, and on a 1, 2, or 3, it works as normal, but on a 4, 5, or 6, it would undershoot, so the artillery dice would how far back you'd have to put the cannonball. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, that could be pretty cool. Well, the other one I've heard is when you place the first counter, you roll a D3, and it scatters to the side. Yeah. 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 I, so it doesn't I go in a straight line. I that. All right. Yeah, that we makes actually, sense. We actually played a test game against, I played against dwarves with marks and goblins, and uh, just that D3 scatter was making it so they couldn't hit anything. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because cannons, like, cannons need to be powerful. You know, if you get hit by a cannon, you're dead. Yeah. yeah. But they need to not be laser guided, is the problem. Isn't, aren't they, like, more accurate than the 40k stuff, some of that, and that's set in the far distant future? Well, let's, let's not even get into 40k, because they have cannons that are, like, 10 inches long that can't even shoot across a 6 inch table or a 6 foot table. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, there's all kinds of things wrong with 40k. Yeah. Yeah. Look at round bases. What are those? <laughs> <laughs> we even give Mangla Squigs a funny look. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I like to see some change with Steadfast. I think Steadfast is really like overpowered. Mm, maybe. If I if Stead if Steadfast worked on like aggregate layers instead of a uh, just whoever had the biggest block. Like, I think if, if you have 11 combined ranks, you should be able to outrank a, a rank of 10 guys. Yeah, uh, yeah I get that. that. That should be in there. I mean, it just puts too much of a like a power boost on really shitty infantry that are just, like, you know, in mass run. Well, they wanted to sell more models. Yeah. Yeah. I like Step Up, though. I want them to keep Step Up, because now I can feel the initiative one source warriors and not care. What's funny is... um. I guess I was pl I was playing the other editions wrong then because we always played with step up, mm. so that wasn't a big deal for us. Uh, seventh, yeah. yeah. I don't mind step up. Step up's a good rule. It's just steadfast. It's like if you go into like I don't know spearmen with my like my warriors for example, and I kill like all but all but six guys and they're steadfast and then they hold. It's like I killed like twenty five spearmen. Yeah. They one combat by like 23, and yet they stick. I'd like them to keep steadfast when it comes to infantry versus infantry, but when there's monsters versus infantry, that's when I think maybe they should bring back some more unit strength kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I don't, I don't mind like when somebody puts in 15 sword masters into a horde of like 100 clan rats or slaves or something, and then having all of the slaves die from these 15 guys, then I'm like, well, I'd, I'd want them, instead of being double on leadership, which of course they would be, I'd, I'd want their leadership eight, whatever they would be with their engineer in the front. Yeah. Because that, that's 100 sword masters killing... But when, uh, but when it's a dragon into those slaves, those slaves, I don't care how many of them there are, that dragon's going to scare the piss out of them. Yeah, they're going to run away. That's yeah. like, I think Steph Fox should stay. I was thinking he'd stay in the back a little bit. Yeah. You yeah. should lose. You should lose steadfast when you're flanked. Oh God, yeah, yeah. Well, well that, brings, that brings me on to another thing I don't like about eight, like the whole disruption thing. Like, you can have like a demon prince in the flank and you're not disrupted, but if you've got ten goblins <laughs> in two ranks of five, that's then, that's where that's where unit strength needs to come back in. Because like a mon one monster, one monstrous infantry should count for more than just one guy. As if monstrous infantry needed more help. Oh, cough, oh, goes, oh, cough. No, I do, I do agree with you there. There's just certain little things that I think need to be changed. Not, not too much. But... Mm. Do you, I, I don't like the parry save. I like to have an extra armor in seventh edition. I do too. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I think I, I'd like to take back the two plus armor save first, warrior. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when Iron Breakers went to three up in combat, just wasn't worth it anymore. Well, yeah, they they just became like 
squishy again. Yeah. Because they're not doing enough damage to one in combat. No, no, not at all. All these infantry that have one attack. I remember when every infantry had only one attack, and then High Elves and Warriors of Chaos got two attacks. Hmm. Yeah. When I when I first started playing, the only infantry ever that had like two attacks was like Source Warriors, and that was it. Yeah, that's, that that was them too. Them and uh, Chaos Warriors. I think huh? Source Warriors had one attack in seventh. Although I could be wrong. Um, when I okay. started in in fourth, they had one attack, and then they had a special tail attack. Hmm. Huh. No, I have a friend who has a problem with if I'm running in my old blood on the Carnosaur, for example, into Twenty Phoenix Guard. This was the case in our game a while back. Then they all got they all fled and got ran down just from one Carnosaur. I killed like five models. He said that one Carnosaur with the old on top just doesn't have the attacks to be able to run down and kill these skilled warriors. So he his idea was to get rid of the whole running down system if they were able to do another edition. He needs he needs to read down read the running away system because it doesn't say that he kills them. It says that he either breaks them up to where they all flee in different directions and they can't regroup or they're hiding in people's farmhouses or whatever. They're just not going to fight again. And that's what I said. But then he was like, "Well, high elves—they're like the most disciplined warriors. I wouldn't expect a high elf to hide in a farmhouse." <laughs> But I, I, at the time, was just like, no, that that's a silly idea. I want my Carnosaur to be able to kill 40, 50 of your Phoenix Guard, whatever. <laughs> you can't get rid of the, like, the running down rules. It's too integral. That's, that's how the majority of non-undead die. Yeah, that's like the whole point of the game, is to like, beat and run down units. <laughs> oh, th this is the thing I thought about um, earlier today. I was thinking to myself... Demon, I was reading the, somebody's blog just to do a bit of research, and somebody was telling me about how they didn't like the whole double six and your demon unit evaporates. I just couldn't help thinking to myself, welcome to every other army in Warhammer ever. I mean, with the exception yeah. of Undead, if you roll a double six for your leadership check, chances are you're going to be cut down on the flea. Yeah. Yeah, I think demon players have to swallow a really hard pill that their army book just isn't awesome anymore. <laughs> well, you got you got to think they can also just pop new units into existence all over the place too. Yeah, I mean, I think the worst thing I've seen from that book is the um, oh, what's it called now? The um, the skill cannon. Well, yeah, there's that as well. But, uh, the, the rock of inevitability. <laughs> the basically, you know, what the rock of inevitability does. I didn't know. No. And um, basically, what it lets you do is it lets you put down a wall anywhere you want on the table. And then in every subsequent turn, you get another piece added on to it. <laughs> but what they never cleared up in the army book is how big the pieces of war can be. Oh, did they not learn their lesson from the Folding Fortress? So you wow. can get this like 55 inch piece of wall that's like 10 inches high and go, wall. <laughs> <laughs> God. And the defending obstacle rules are something that I find to be really awesome rules, but they're so underused because, well, Nobody just has those little bits of wall there and will sit a troop unit behind it. But now with the demons, they've just got uh, things to take advantage of that. And it, well, it, in, in the next, by the end of the summer, you're going to see a new uh, wall kit, Walls and Hedges from GW. Yeah. <laughs> and and then, the one, like the Aegis like Defense. Her, it, let's stick everything behind that. There's another broken build from the human book. You know, if you take... Um, Epidemus, a noble guy. Oh, yeah. Basically, like you know, you get the kill counter, and then all the noble stuff gets better. Like in in the book, it basically says he has to be alive. He doesn't have to be on the table. You can just put him in the portal glyph, and he can never die because you don't never have to deploy him. <laughs> oh God! So you put the demon in the portal glyph. You put Epidemus in the portal glyph. Kill all your shit with Nurgle, and you can never lose the bonus. So what exactly does the poor glyph do? Um, you pick one unit from your army, and then you don't deploy it. And then at any point during the game, the guy holding the portal glyph puts the portal glyph down, and that unit appears from the portal glyph. And what? It doesn't have any ruling about if it doesn't come on, it's removed as a casualty. Like every ambushing unit does well, that. Yeah, if you're still in it at the end of the game, then it counts as destroyed. Oh, okay. So, we'll just find 
Yeah, she's too sick to put them on the table. And it doesn't like have a randomness roll either. It's not like ambush where it randomly comes on. No, uh, the, you place it. I think in within a certain distance of the guy that has it, and then you scatter it decent. Yeah. And then that's where the template is, and the unit comes on from there, uh, facing any direction. That's so weird. It's a re it's a really good thing. Imagine I don't know. You've got a bloodthirst with a portal glyph. You fly up. You drop your portal glyph on the flank of your opponent's army, and then a hundred bloodlets. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you go, oh, take the up and go home because you just lost. They are making it more like 40k with the whole like deep strike thing. It's the the best thing I can. Yeah, I mean, wait till ninth edition when you've got rules for flyers. Oh, yeah. Separate rules for flying stuff, like the phoenixes and the sky cutter. They all have flying rules. Sky cutter. Has anyone used one of those yet? I have. Any good? Yeah, it was all right. I mean, it was. It's not that expensive, so you know, like in points, all upgraded. It's a uh, hundred and twenty, I think, hundred and twenty-five. Hmm. And how does that thing have impact hits? I, I, you know, I, I try not to to think about that because your brain will explode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's not the impact hits that you gotta you gotta like ask yourself. It's like, how does it fly off after making the impact hits? <laughs> <laughs> It just it's a bird and a bucket that just crashed into something. <laughs> I just I can just imagine it like the pigeon crashing into a window or something and then Yeah, that's exactly like, what, what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, like the eagle's heads all crumpled in, ne necks broken, feathers everywhere. It's like, hey, I'm fine guys, I'm gonna keep flying. And it's got a bucket stuck in its butt after that. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's where that thing is going. <laughs> Gonna eat, yeah. <laughs> no, but when the the phoenixes first came out, I remember everyone going and hyping the uh, fire phoenix, saying, "Oh, this sounds awesome!" And everyone everyone seems to have made the frost phoenix from their kit, unless they've done like the double kit. Uh, I've played both, and I think I think the frost phoenix is your actual better bet. Yeah, that was oh. my initial reaction when it first came out because of the strength modifier. I've yet to actually have a prob with one, but then again, maybe, awesome. I just, maybe I've been lucky. <laughs> I, I, just, I would maybe use him. I just don't. But I don't like monsters. I've got the demon prince who really dies every game. Gets shot by a cannon. Mm, yeah. But I've got, I've got the, like the monster syndrome, but I finally threw one in my list just because my eagle or my uh, griffin noble wasn't doing anything ever. You see, if I was playing high offs, I'd rather pull rare. I'd rather run like four ball throws and four eagles. Yeah, why not just use a, a unit of like twenty eagles? <laughs> awesome. Well, well, can you imagine the horde of eagles? What was that? Can you imagine a horde of eagles? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Because they actually count as skirmishes. Yeah. You'd have, you'd have eighteen skirmishing eagles. Uh huh. That would just wreck shit up, man. It would cost a, so many points, though. They're right. only fifty points. They're only fifty points each, unless you want to give them all these strikes first. Yes, yeah, nine hundred points. <laughs> and, and who owns eighteen eagles? <laughs> I got three. I have three, so. Oh, yeah. I no one has eighteen eagles. Almost there. Tell Malorian about it. He'll have one. He'll have one. Oh, he's already mentioned it on one of his tactical things. Yeah. It's just a matter of time now. He loves his hobby. I watched his most recent um, podcast video where he's on about the Sisters of Avalon. And he's like, oh, well, I, I like hordes, so I'm thinking 30 Sisters of Avalon. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had a good laugh at that. Too. It could work. I mean... So it's not going to work. They have no musician and they only shoot 24 inches. Everybody will be in there playing. Yeah. He was talking about, though, how they could like wipe off a rank of black orcs. I was just thinking that's some, that's yeah, so There's a lot of stuff that can wipe off a rank of black orcs that are cheaper. Yeah. Like a stone thrower. Like, like black yeah. orcs are not like the be all and end all of a unit on the table. Like, they should be, alright? Yeah, I mean, don't worry. That's just. I've Come on, I mean, I, I don't understand how a savage orc can beat up a black orc. I don't understand that. 
Because he carries around a lucky head. Because he's got paint on his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, what he's actually doing is he's walking on his forehead, written a really confusing, like, conundrum, and the black one kind of stands there going, what? And then he punches him. <laughs> <laughs> That's assuming the black orc can read. Well, exactly. He tries his very bestest. Well, he's probably written, like, like, your mama is fat or something. <laughs> there you go. Come oh, on, blend in, son of a bitch. There you go. So, yeah, any of you guys got any games coming up or tournaments or anything? I have my usual three games tomorrow. I'm playing, I'm playing Orcs and Goblins tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I have my first Vampire Camp report coming out soon. Nice. I've got, like, no games until Wednesday, but then I've got, like, ten games in the space of five days. Well, my Thursday game got cancelled, so I've not got any for... I've not got any, thinking about it. I don't think I've got any. I'll play you, Mr. Chewy Center. Alright, we'll have a Skype game. That'll be fun. Because I've got, like, the, the ton coming up next weekend, so that should be cool. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're only over in Birmingham. You should go over to Warham World sometime. Yeah, I was originally going to go, and then my friend decided it would be fun to disappear off the face of the earth for a couple of months, and I didn't get to arrange it. That's right. Like, that's my local store. So. Yeah. How I far are you? Wanna, I want to make a trip from there or two there. It'll take me about two to three hours to drive down there, depending on the traffic and whatnot. Oh, that's nothing. Yeah, that's I know. Isn't that, cr is that crazy? Was like, I was going to go but, on my own. I'm like, no, thanks. But if I was going to go, come on, dude. I, I mean, like, I'll, I'll hop in the car for five hours to go to Vegas. <laughs> I know. You know I know. Like, yeah, but a five-hour drive is worth it to get to Vegas. Not really. Vegas does suck. I mean. I just go there for tournaments and stuff. I'm not talking about like, oh, well, it's going to be too far or anything. It's just, I wanted to do the doubles tournament, and my friend and I were going to do it, but he decided it would be fun to disappear, so. What do you do next yeah. week, then? Next week. Yeah, so on the 15th and 16th. Uh, what was that, sorry? On the 15th and 16th, do you have any plans? Because it's the, the fantasy throne of schools, it's like really undersubscribed. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm at uh, college for the next four weeks. That's why I've not really been posting anything because it's mad, a mad dash at the minute to try and get everything done. So for the next four weeks, I'm going to be minimal content kind of thing. You should go do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fail in life to succeed in YouTube. It's at it's the weekend. We don't do college at the weekend. It's when I have to do my work. Doing actual work in college? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is it? I'm confused. <laughs> right, I'm going to get a refill on beer. I shall return. I think I'm going to go grab a bottle of sake. It's too early for me to start drinking. <laughs> well, then I guess it's way too early for me. It's <laughs> 3 o'clock. <laughs> 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 It's like the middle of the day out here, right. you, and you're saying it's a, uh, it's too early. Well, if I start drinking, I won't be able to go play. That's the also pro other problem. Oh yeah. See, I have no plans other than watching some fights at my house. Yeah. Respectable pursuit. If I put one well, thing in. What's funny is is because of my line of work, I get to like all the pay per views for the UFC that I get. I get to say like, um. Uh, business expenses. <laughs> really? Well, I, I teach I teach jujitsu and mixed martial arts, so I get to be like, all right, that's a business expense. All yeah, the travel that I'm off. gonna get to do, I do. I write it all off. That's awesome. <laughs> it's research. Fuck taxes. Is that what you gotta do? Huh? What really what really sucks is when you own your own store and like because you just you, you may have only made thirty thousand dollars for the year, but you're rich. 
because your store moved through so much product. I had to close my store because of that. Really? So, yeah. I was like, so if I pay all the taxes I owe next year, I won't like have any money for like food and stuff. That sucks. Our government's retarded. Yeah, and I can't even blame Obama for that because that was the year before he got into office. No. All right, so then there's one thing you can't blame him for. <laughs> I actually don't blame him for much. Uh, you guys really hate Obama, right? I don't really care for him. But. I, yeah, I, I'm like, me. I mean, he's he's done very little, but what he's done has been kind of questionable and stupid. <laughs> Oh, welcome to politics, I guess. True. At least your politicians have to do stuff. I've never seen like a UK politician do anything for that for me. Everything our politicians seem to do is really, really trivial. Like the guy who got called, uh, who called some police officer a pleb or something, and got kicked out of parliament, or had to resign or something. Like that. He called him a what? Pleb. Yeah. I have no idea what that means. It's basically like a douchebag. It's like I work for douchebag. Like oh. No one uses it. That's why you've not heard of it. Or maybe because I've never been to England. Yeah. No, no one in England uses that word. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so, it's so archaic. But our entire system is like is archaic. It's set up that way. It's just really... Like, when they want to pass like a bill in Parliament, it takes like months and months and months of like talking about the same shit. <laughs> yeah, isn't that like the same way across all democracies? Uh, that's the running yeah. joke. Yeah, that's the way it is here too. We're, we're particularly bad for it because nothing comes out of it at the end. <laughs> yeah, we look at the same shit law at the end of it. I don't know. I'm just sitting here because I studied politics and I hated it. I was watching some stand-up. The guy was like, "Well, what are the main, the th what are the things that have been floating around in politics since before time began in every democracy?" It was something like gay marriage, abortion, and there was one other topic. And uh, there's no, there's no progress on any of them, and it's, there's no point to talking about them anymore. Yeah, it's funny how the the big deals are always the ones where people are trying to say what other people can do. That doesn't affect them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are always the biggest ones. It's like, yeah, we, we have like all these murderers, but we really care what you do with your own vagina. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh well. I do find it kind of weird how, like, I'll, I'll go onto like a forum or something and I'll. And I'll be reading about some politics and stuff, what's happening in America. And there are like, well, you can get involved and you can stop it and support this thing. Like, well, I live on the side of the world, what can I do? And they're like, oh, well, you have a say in what goes on in our country. You can fill out this form and your vote will be passed on to some senator or another. Is that a does that really happen? Do these senators get all this mail from people from like other countries, like the UK, Sweden, telling them what the hell they should do with their politics in their local? I know there. I know there's no official like uh, response to it, but I'm pretty sure if I was sitting there and I, you know, I was in charge of something here, I got a letter from a guy in the UK, it'd go straight in the fucking trash. Yeah, like. <laughs> 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 I'd be like, I got enough problems with people's opinions in my own little bureau. I think, that's, that's legit, but I think it's only for people that are like expats. They're like Americans that live in this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I work with the guy who's from LA, and he's like allowed to vote in... Even though he, like, he lives here, he's allowed to vote in like the American elections. And stuff. That's, that's really weird, actually. Yeah, as long as he's still a citizen, he can get an absentee ballot. Yeah, but I mean, this guy is like the most fascist person you'll ever meet. So he probably fits the American like democracy quite well. Uh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that was so fucked up. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, you you guys got like really offended over that. I mean, I'm sitting here thinking, what? What's the big deal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm not that offended. I'm just. 
I was just laughing. I don't know about I think, it's, I think it's funny. Nothing wrong with a bit of casual racism. Yeah. Mm. Xenophobic <laughs> bastard. I don't get it, because that's the equivalent over here of somebody like, oh, what? he called him a pleb at the gate. Like, <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't, I can't understand people that like take things really offensively for like no reason. You know, just like completely over the top. Yeah. Hence why the gay marriage bill still hasn't been passed. I thought like it has been passed, hasn't it? Yeah. But not everywhere. Like America, some places still don't have it. Ah, uh, yeah. I think meant here. Well, I just mean in everyone in general. Yeah. Oh, it's, you guys, it passed there? Yeah, gay marriage. I, I, knew, I knew it passed in France. I don't know, I don't know about everywhere else. Yeah, they, they passed it a while ago. They've had their first like gay marriage and they, they publicized it on TV and stuff. I thought that was a bit over the top. <laughs> Made like a massive parade out of these two guys. California's had it legal since like 2001, so it really hasn't been that big a deal here. I, I just don't get the whole... <laughs> if you want to get married, let me get married, man. Yeah. What was what's the problem? I don't know. I just don't want it to be passed, and then in a couple of years we'll get all these stupid reality TV shows like Whitezilla, but the gay couple just miss. No, don't want that. Not because of the gay couple thing; it's because reality TV in general. They'll hop on the newest like craze. Oh God, yeah, I can see it now. Like. Like gay couples going to um, adopt kids, and it's like kids have to like do like a, a total wipeout challenge to be adopted. Yeah. That makes all sense. Why am I slating that? Just throw, <laughs> just throw kids down like this ridiculous assault course, and if they win, they get adopted. <laughs> all right then. That'd be so cool, man. If I'm prime minister, that's the first law I'm passing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And we're live too, Christ, if anybody's listening. <laughs> All of our subscriptions just drop to like three people. Yeah. Each other. <laughs> Does anyone actually leave in comments? I don't think so. I don't know if we've got any viewers. Yeah. There's a couple. Oh, cool. People that are, are, like, we're watching have just have now joined the actual videos, like no one's watching. Yeah, yeah. I just like to oh. I, I, I was joking about that previous comment, by the way. Yeah. Everything said has been said in jest. Mm. Except for that. <laughs> that was serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're offended by anything I say, then kind of just ignore it and go for it. <laughs> so do you really think? Do you really think that many people get upset about the profanity? On the channels, according to Wan, yeah. That's that's what I was going to bring up as well. According to Wan, yeah. Huh. That's so I've crazy. Never had any problems, he's got more subscribers than most of us. Yeah, but he says that there's an equal mix of people who like it and people who don't because, well, that's the way he says that it is. I mean, some people say that it's liberating to be able to come on and listen to it. But wow, I just consider people talking. Yeah, I, I'm not offended by like bad language or, or any, in any way at all. I think it's just words. Mm. If you're offended by it, and that's you, your personal you know, way. I think what's probably the, the problem is it'll be like the interviewers that you watch and parents are walking. And they're all just like bad language. And stuff. Well, if you were to look on your demographic and see that there's like 15, 16 year old kids watching it, you wouldn't care. But if, uh, or anything more like 40, 50, whatever. But if you saw like really young children watching it, you'd probably lay off it. Huh. I don't know. I don't know if I would. Yeah, it's just you've me. got like 10 and below kids and you're just there like, oh, fuck this and whatever. Well, like, all of my videos are done. Like, I'm filming it while I'm playing. So, if I cuss, I cuss. Yeah. You know? I'm not going to go back and edit the damn thing. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm I, not. I'm I not a Mr. Chewy Center, so. I don't intentionally set out to to like swear and cuss on camera, but yeah. you're like you know, you're going back through the pictures of the game and something, the you know, reignites the passion that you had at the time if it annoys you, then sometimes it just comes out. What was that comment aimed at anyway? I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I seem to have me been missing a lance. A lance? What are you putting together? No, I was putting together some black knights, and I swear I left a lance on the side here. No, uh, it's gone. Oh, oh, got it. Yeah, good. Awesome. Every time I drop something, I just have to like get it before the dogs do. <laughs> so I was playing my first game with vampires. Uh, actually, it happened in the second game as well. So I was playing these games with my vampires, and I had the mortar engines kind of at the back towards me. And yeah. every time I'd leave over, lean over, I'm wearing this sort of like jacket that's open. And I'd reach over, and the jacket would sort of come up a little bit, and the mortis engines would sort of hook onto this jacket, and I'd retract uh -huh. my arm, and the mortis engine would come with it, and I was like, oh, fuck, no! The lances are just going to break. Oh, that God. sucks. I love the way they look, but they are the most awkward models. People are wondering how they're going to transport the sky cutter. This thing is like, if you've ever transported a plastic lance, and you've known how bad they are, there's hundreds of them on this Morris engine. They're just sticking up. Yeah. Well, the way I, I transport all my Bretonians is uh, they're all magnetized, so like they don't their lances don't touch anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, GW doesn't necessarily think about transportation and similar models. No, they assume everybody's going to have an army for you to play in their own private game room. You know. Well, like like the Perry twins when they used to show the glamour shots of their game room and they had like mountainscapes and all that kind of stuff everywhere. It's like, well, we can't all do that. So, yeah. yeah. So, I couldn't, I, I still couldn't, with the explanation of my store manager, find out why they stopped doing games in Games Workshop stores in this country for about a six month time period. That's weird. Yeah, I mentioned it in a brief video, and people had got back to me saying that they were getting it in their part of the world and things like that. My my, my local stores like didn't do it; they kept their game in the game. But yeah. there seems to be some concession that open gaming doesn't make money when that's clearly not true. Yeah, yeah. Like we always used to have it where one manager at one of the stores used to go to was like a real ass. And he used to hate people gaming on the tables. He wanted them available for like intro games. Yeah, yeah. And we have to explain that like, there's no one here, and if we're stood around to like play the game, it's going to bring more people in. You know, the yeah. store looks like he's animated. It looks like there's something going on. Like we're just sat here doing nothing. Yeah. So our store manager is going to be leaving soon, and. Uh, I don't know who's going to take it over, so that's kind of an uncertain thing. But the guy was a legend, so shout out to him. He's clearly not watching. <laughs> Where in internet land, there's a shout out for him. <laughs> um, okay. I just went through the realization that this isn't even my model, so all this hard work, it doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 don't don't let it don't let it ruin your hobby. <laughs> Bertonia will ruin your hobby. I'm just saying. I think I'm done with this. I'm gonna wait. I think I'm at that point. If I continue to paint this horse anymore, I'm just gonna destroy it. Yeah. Yeah. At least you're not wet blending demon muscle. Wet blending. It looks pretty good. 
Yeah, it does, definitely. But it's, in fact, it's not actually taking me as long as I thought it would take. Take me two hours, and he's, all his flesh is almost done. Really work for painting tutorials. <sighs> what about painting tutorials? Uh, I should really watch more of them. I don't think I've ever watched one. I haven't watched any on here, but uh, there's a the guy that paints up the local gaming store. He's, he's got a bunch of Golden Demon awards, and he gives free painting tutorials up there all the time. So I've, I've sat into a couple of those. That's cool. Yeah, I've got the uh, the new one here. We got the new ones. They're really cool. Which I'd be happy to send to anyone if you want them. Happy to what? So I'd, I'd be happy to send them to anyone if you want them. But I don't think they're available anymore. So, I've gone and started myself up a website. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I, I went to your website. Oh. Did you? What did you I did. But it was really well laid out. Oh, cool. And then it just, it just says uh, that's where all your hobby ideas and stuff are going to go. Yeah, like if ever I get really frustrated one day and decide that Ogre shouldn't have movement six, you're going to hear about it. Okay. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be looking at it. Maybe it'll inspire me to do the same thing. Yeah, so if you want the, the URL for the blog, it's www.penisland.com. Oh, yeah, yeah, great. Okay. If anybody goes to that, I feel sorry for them. <laughs> no, you'll find that on my page. I'll put it up soon on my uh, YouTube account. What, Pen Island? Yes, Pen Island. <laughs> I've only got one more of these little bastards to put together. No sympathy, dude. No high elves. Are you still hating on my high elves? <laughs> we do have a Skaven player here. Oh, never mind. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that was me. when. Yeah, I, I'm sorry about that. I was like, oh, it's my, I'm getting vampires in like a day, and I was just watched she report, and it was high elves versus vampires. And I was saying something about the vampire. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, wasn't directed against your high elves, but I was glad to see him lose. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? They probably wouldn't have fared so bad if he wasn't running around with a four-up regen on all of his units. They shouldn't have. Had. Yeah. I was like, man, that really, uh, that really made your guys hard to kill. I think if I ever come into like a cheap mortis engine, I might just do that in three K, run around with three of them just to have a four-up uh, regen. Yeah, but he was doing it with one Mortis engine, yeah. and he was just letting it stack. He was like, oh no, I'm, just, I'm keeping track of it. Every time it, it hits him, it gets one better. I was yeah. like, alright. No, I feel sorry for you, because it's it's one thing to have it happen in a game, but when you, when you look back on something like that, and it was a pivotal thing in the game... It, it was such a big thing. I just hate when that happens. Yeah, it was. Then again, of course, if our uh, if our watchtower scenario didn't go until turn nine or whatever it was, <laughs> it would have uh, <laughs> it would have probably worked out for the better for me because I lost it that turn. Game's going to turn nine of the best though. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it was you know it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. We wound, it was funny because like we wound up uh, like we had to take a break like halfway through the game and went and saw a movie or something. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember that. You you came back. Yeah. yeah I was like, I don't remember what happened during the game. <laughs> so this is what this is what it is. And again, I'm not trying to make money on my channel or anything. No. no.
If I was, I'd go bring in a model or something. <laughs> bring, bring in one of the girls on my team. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. Well, just just look. Once you know, once there's a female on your channel, like, bam, you get popularity instantly. It's true. I'm guilty of it too. I want to subscribe to War Games Girl just because she's hot. See, until like a couple of weeks ago, when I was in a hangout, I think it was after a hangout. It might have been. Yeah, it was our like ten man hangout that we were talking about it. I just didn't know who any of these people were, like any of the female wargamers that were out there. Really? Isn't like Joey Berry like your next door neighbor? No, nope, and I still haven't watched one of the videos. <laughs> I can't get I can't get offended or laugh at that joke because I've no idea. Um but yeah, I really should I suppose. <sighs> Alright, I think I'm out. I'm going to go play a game, and then I think I'm going to build some terrain. Who's you yeah, how's, how's your uh, Mordheim stuff going? Oh, yeah. Good. I got I got another uh, plateau section I'm working on, and then some more buildings to do. So Nice. I just well, I went through a bunch of old boxes and found all my old Mordheim stuff. I still have my Marienburg. Nice. Game. You should start playing. I think we're going to do a couple. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start doing some reports on it, too. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to, in a couple of uh, weeks, once the city's up and running, we'll probably do like a five or six game campaign and broadcast it onto YouTube and whatnot. Be awesome. So, yeah. Look forward to it. Yeah, Hopefully thanks. We'll continue all the specialist game stuff like Gone now. Yeah. I like Mordheim, though. It's a cool game. Yeah. I just wish they'd come out with an 8th edition version of it. Yeah, I've gone through a couple different phases of trying to tweak the game, and it's hard. Like, I don't know, we tried messing around with random charge like 8th edition did. Right. It didn't really fit into Mordheim at all. Huh. Well, that's kind of in the balls, because I was just writing that up. <laughs> to try. I was just writing up like rules to you know put in eighth edition stuff into that. And it's that a, was one of them. it's it's tough. We tried a bunch of different ways because it screws with the different abilities and stuff. Because then like s sprint becomes less of a good ability. Right. If you could just charge, you know, your movement plus two d six, or maybe maybe it should be charges your double your movement plus d six. I don't know. There's there's a couple different ways we tried and it's. There's got, there's got to be a way to do it, and if you figure it out, let me know, because it's just stupid when you play, like, Skaven, and you can move so quickly away from your enemy, and the dwarves n can never get to you. Right. So, I don't know. And we're trying to figure out house rules for Infiltrate, because it's such a, a broken ability. Yep. But, uh, one thing, one thing that we did, if you, if you want to try out experimental rules that We've, that we've started is uh, instead of uh, strength four being minus one armor, we started at strength five. Huh. This way, this way, uh, light armor or shield is worth it. Cat ass. Right. Um, just because strength four, it's not that hard to get your heroes or your henchmen at strength four, and by the time that comes around, light armor and shields are like useless. Nothing. Yeah. So we did that, uh, and that's that's been kind of useful. Um, we've had a bunch of different house rules that we do. I mean, for the most part, this is like when we're tired of being super competitive with Warhammer and we just switch over to Mordheim, which is just more laid back, I think. Yeah, we, we play a lot of Blood Bowl for that reason, too. Yeah, I've never played Blood Bowl. No? No, I haven't. It's uh, it's fun. It's, uh, it's broken just because it's on a square like deal. Like, you move by square, so moving diagonally is way faster than just moving straight. I think that right there, I think that kind of breaks the game. Right. Huh. I think if they uh, if they put it on like hexes or just an open open field, and you just measured by inches, I think that'd be better. Right. 
But I am going to go uh, have some drinks and watch some fights, guys. It was good talking to you. All right, man. Cool. Yeah, see ya. Bye. Yeah, I'm out of here, too, so we'll do it again sometime. Yeah. All right, goodbye, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, later. Later, Mr. Balderson. <laughs> Bye. Have a good one. Me too. So for everyone that's left, I've been invited to play Mantic's version of Warhammer, is how it was described to me, over on one of the weekdays. I don't think I'm going to go do it, but if anybody here has an idea as to what that even is. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. I had to go let my dog out. Alright. Yeah, I was just saying that I've been invited to play Mantic's version of Warhammer like next week or something. Nice. No idea what that even is. So if, anyway, if you've got an insight on that. No idea. No. no. I just saw the dwarves in there. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I know they've sort of been doing miniatures for ages. I didn't know they were bringing out their own system. Yeah, neither did I. I was, I was just, you know, they were there. They were having to be talking about, it, and they said, "Oh, come along, come along to this other store, and we can go play it." Okay. <sighs> Drop my spoon. I don't think I'm going to do it though. I don't know. If I do, I certainly won't be reporting it because I won't have any clue what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So these guys are doing this, and. <laughs> Yeah, these guys happen to move up here. <laughs> no, I won. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so my opponent said that I lost. Um, he didn't tell me why, but I, I, I lost. <laughs> yeah. I just see all in the comment section, like, your opponent was taking advantage of you here, 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 and here. Like, this is what you did wrong. And this <laughs> is what you cheated on. And I'd have no idea. <laughs> That's kind of why I'm interested in watching uh, Long Island Wargame and do some uh, more time. Yeah, I've, I've, never, I've never played it. I'd have no idea what was going on, but it'd be good to learn. Yeah, yeah. And I've and I've heard people come to me like um, in real life, come into the store while I'm having a game, and they'll be like, "Oh, what, you know, what's this Warhammer stuff you're playing?" And I'll explain to them, and I and I'll take them through some of the armies, and I've said to the guy, "Oh, here's my here's my channel details. You can go and check it out if you just want to see some models being pulled off the table." You won't have a clue what's going on, but it's always fun to watch. And uh, he sent me a PM, like, oh, I really enjoy watching your reports, even though I don't know what's going on. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. It'll be the same way with Nick. I have no idea what's going on. No, it's good to watch. Like, I don't really watch battle reports. I just have one in the background when I'm painting. Yeah. I just kind of listen to them. And then if something gets particularly, like, exciting, I'll, like... Obviously, I'll start watching it. I'll go back and. Right, I've got to go get some more sprues as well, then. Got boxes of sprues all around me. I can never find what I want. Hold on. Yeah, I'm having to sit on my living room floor because my painted area is. Yeah, my uh, current figures are all over my bedroom floor. Everything I bought from Ant has found its way into some box or another, but that hasn't got its own shelf or own department where it lives or anything. It's on the floor. And there's some pieces that don't even fit into the box, so they are on their bases in the floor on the floor. <laughs> Fair enough. The terror geist being one as well, I know I shouldn't be uh, leaving that out on the floor, I could get trodden on and whatnot, but the terror geist is sitting in the middle of my floor. Dude, if you stood in that terror guys, that would hurt. Oh, <laughs> that, would really hurt. that would inflict some serious damage. <laughs> yeah, the mortis engines were also on the floor, and they've got the spears pointing out everywhere, but uh, no, fortunately they now found their way into a box. Yeah. I've modelled it in um, the terror guys, that is, in the pose where it's standing on the rocks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do find that really cool. I think how everyone models it, they model it in the same way. They model it like hunched over and screaming. So I modeled it on the rocks. It does look pretty cool. Yeah, I've seen someone that's modeled it like clawing down a building, so it's facing down. Oh wow! Ground, and it's like he's angled the like arched the neck backwards. 
That must take some. Yeah, there's, there's some really awesome conversions out there. Some people either are really awesome at modeling or have way too much spare time. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, the other one I've seen as well was was actually a 40k conversion, but he had uh, you know the new Hell Drake thing for space moons. I don't know if you know it. No, no. It's like this flying dragon thing, and basically, okay. like he modeled it like grabbing onto the front of this like Valkyrie, ripping the cockpit open and breathing fire into it. Might look to me. That looks awesome. Well, it would look if I could see it, but in my imagination, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's from the artwork in the Codex. That's where he's got the inspiration from, but he's pulled it off perfectly. It just looks yeah. cool. But those models, like, I'd want to display them. I'd want them on show. Using them in the game is kind of like, oh, they might break this week when I transport them. Yeah, especially that one. Yeah. There's another guy as well who's done, like, a Space Marine army. But he's, um, he's painted and modeled them all up like Halo. Oh, wow. So he's got, like, his attack yeah. mounts are, like, warthogs and... <laughs> That's so cool. Like, green stuffed all, like, Master Chief masks onto all the guys. It looks pretty cool. Oh, man, I'll have to see the army. <laughs> he's oh, one of the guys. Next time he's down, I'll see if I can snap some pictures of it, if he doesn't mind, and then I'll put it on my channel. Yeah, if you could, man, I'd, I'd give that one a like. But uh, no, I'm a real big fan of the Halo series, so that'd be cool. Yeah, he's done it really well as well. It's, when when I was talking to him, he was saying like, how he did it. It's all really simple. He's just like he's just done it so well. Yeah. I decided to myself one day that I was going to do, I was going to do a game, uh, sorry, an army that everything was going to be converted and every every model would be having like a unique pose, and it would all look awesome. And I decided stupidly that that was going to be vampire cans because I thought that the zombie models looked awesome and if I could make them all like unique and quirky then it would be like a cool looking army. Yeah, I didn't realise how dull 140 zombies were to make. So I just thought, I, I can't be bothered. Horrible. You know the vampire can skeletons? Yeah. Uh, what do they come with? Like, what do you arm them with? Um, they come with hand weapon shield or spear and shield, I think. Because I remember with my Tomb Kings I had a unit of 40 skeleton warriors that I modeled them all up into a Roman Testudo. Oh, okay. So they all had the shields like in like the tortoise formation. Each one yeah. had to rank up perfectly. It took ages, but mine looked incredible. That's what I did with my lizard men. I did um, I, the shields are meant to go on their arms, but I put them forward so they were all holding it in like a Roman shield wall or something like that. Yeah. Nice. Sometimes it's just it's just the little things that make the biggest difference, I guess. Yeah. But in a horde army, it's kind of less so, because no one's going to pick up that one clan right you did that for. <laughs> Talking about clan rats, like a friend of mine had a very nice idea. Um, there are lots and lots of models, uh, like Second World War uh, German infantry. Hmm. And you can have the helmets um, on little sprues, you can um, buy them uh, separately. And he actually made all his clan rats with German World War Two helmets. <laughs> so they were they, they were all in German World War Two scheme with a World War Two uh, Wheel of Doom. I don't know if it was called, but Doom. it was really nice to see all these little rats with the German steel helmets. That was really funny. <laughs> I know someone that's done um, <coughs> an Imperial Guard army for forty k. Painted up like the red coats of like Rockstrift, like the Zulus. So they've all got like little white like helmets on and the red coats and Yeah. Oh that's cool. I love the Zulu movies. Yeah, so he's like he green stuffed individually all those white helmets on. The time that must have taken. I saw a brilliant um Skaven Undead Army. There was um like a master necromancer of the Skaven who had his hand out outstretched like a puppet master would, and he had all of his Skaven zombies in front of him. I thought that was amazing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I just love, I love like themed conversions, where, where yeah. you know, someone's had like an awesome idea and they just ran with it. Like there's a guy who entered an army 
Again, it's 40k. All the good conversions around here are always 40k. Um, it was an orc army, and they were called the Amigo Orcs, and they all had like sombreros on, and all, like, <laughs> it was like um, there was a guy pushing like a burrito stand and stuff. It was so funny. <laughs> But when Ant was doing that carnival of chaos on his videos, I just thought, the time that must have taken. Yeah, be, people really go smile and hell can, and then, yeah. I really commend him for it. I don't have the patience to do that. I can barely, like, have the patience to wet blend and paint well. Never mind convert as well. I haven't got the patience to Google what wet blending is. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wet blending is like the reverse of like shading. Rather than using a wash, you just paint your dark colour into the recesses and then okay. blend it back out while it's still wet. Like I don't know if you can see my paints; they're still wet. Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, um, I can use this stuff, and basically it stops the paint from drying. Retired a medium. Am I reading that right? Yeah. Okay, good. I thought I wasn't. <laughs> It's basically, you mix it like one to one with the paint, or one part paint, two parts retarder, and it just it keeps the paint wet so you can move it around and move it back and forth. Oh, that's a cool, cool, unique thing. Yeah. So then, then what, would you wet the brush when you're wet, wet blended, or does that just mean that the paint's wet? Would you get water on your brush then? No, you use a dry brush because there's enough moisture in the paint. Okay. Um. At the moment, I'm using three brushes, so I've got one for each colour. And then basically, you, you start with the darkest colour into the recesses, you pull it out with your middle colour, and then you highlight the edges with the lighter colour, and then you just literally just brush stroke over it, and they blend together, and you get a nice transition. Hmm, okay. It's fairly straightforward, it's just time consuming. You've got the patience to, you know, like brush stroke over the same area repeatedly. Yeah. If you can do that, then you'll be able to wet blend it. When I first came back into the hobby, it was about uh, it was over a year ago, and I didn't know what washes were, so I had a source warrior and got black paint and the fine detail brush and painted every crack in between <laughs> the scales individually. Oh, came man. back into Games Workshop with this giant smile on my face, like, "Oh, look what I've done! It looks awesome." Stone man just like, "Yeah, why don't you try this?" He got another one of my models, did everything I did, but better. That was soul destroying as well. The, when I finished my Source Warriors, I had to repaint that model. <laughs> it's always good to like, you know, learn stuff though. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, not everyone is like, you know, knows everything, so Of course not, yeah. I mean I really should watch more painting tutorials because everything I've I've picked up with my painting has really been self-taught. So people will quote me like, "Oh, wet blending and dry brushing." I didn't even know what dry brushing was until like a few months ago. I was like, "Oh, I've been painting my way for a good while now. What what is this dry brushing you speak of?" But it's like one of the most simple and well used, uh, most widely used techniques. Yeah, I mean, I I use dry brushing a lot, but I actually find dry brushing. Harder than wet blending, which is yeah. kind of a bizarre you know, conundrum because everyone uses false black on dry brushing as being really simple, but I'm always just too heavy with the dry brush. That's just my fault. I'm heavy handed. Yeah, yeah. And then I end up just rubbing more colour on rather than just dry brushing. Mm. Now I'm like, screw this, I'm going to wet blend. And everyone's like, well, what are you doing that for? It's harder. It's like, no, for me, it's easier. Leave me alone. <laughs> I tried to uh, dry brush it. And yeah, I can do it. I dry brushed them on dwarf beards, and that's nice and everything. But I tried to dry brush something else, I don't remember what it was. But I'd always get a different consistency of paint on my brush each time. It would either come out really light or too... too uh, not... What was the word I'm looking for? Not dark. Not bright enough. It's, it's a weird word. Too thin, yeah. I guess, would be the word. I, I get what you mean. Yeah. And then you end up going over it again, and that's when you do it too heavy, and you go too far the way. Yeah. Or you lose the dry brushing effect because there's too many like brush marks and yeah, you know, more the colour you try to put on than it is the dry brush. The way I found this work for me at the moment with dry brushing is to do multiple layers of different colours of dry brush. To so say oh, if, okay. like, if I'm like dry brushing black, I'll dry brush it with grey, but with like three different greys. 
Hmm. And then like I bring the scale round slowly rather than trying to do it in one. But, but then that's me because I get I find drag machine that's more difficult than. Just grab me some other bases. Don't mind me. There we go. So the store manager that I said is leaving has been pretty cool to me. He, um, he noticed that I bought this kit that's been sitting in his store for about six six months, maybe more. And he wanted one of the pieces in it, but didn't want to open a £150 kit to get one of those pieces. So he said to me that if I give, if I give him a, either the... Is it like the Strigoi Gold King that goes on top of the Terrorgeist, or the guy who go, the vampire goes on top of the um, zombie dragon? I forget which he wants. Then he'll give me another Necromancer. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So that guy is a legend, though. I've seen him open up. Was what was the old forty k Battle for Skull Pass set? Um, it's on Black Reach. Yeah, that's it. He opened up a whole kit of those for like one model for some guy who came into the store asking for it. Fair play. Yeah, I know. I was like, wow, that's that's. The most yeah, I mean, you get some store managers that do that, and then you get some others that just really don't seem to care. Yeah, I just hope we don't have that when our new manager comes in. Depends uh, obviously. Yeah, I find that each store as well has its own sort of way of running. Like they they'll get their orders from head office, and like it was like you were saying. The, the global ban of games in GW stores was in effect, and your guys kept playing it. I think somebody has said that earlier. Yeah, um, yeah, but and then you've got you've got that kind of call, but not that doesn't happen everywhere. But other things will happen that like uh, the guy will open up a whole assault on Black Reach, Black Reach for one model. Mm. There we go. One Black Knight has been completed in. How long have I been hanging out with you guys? <laughs> About that two hours. Yeah. <laughs> Damn mold lines. Yeah. I, I, I think building takes longer than painting sometimes. Hmm. I will have a second black knight done though. Don't you worry. It's just this lance is gluing on, and it's if I uh, move it too much, it will fall down. I bought like these chaos warriors on eBay, and um, I saved pretty much like ten euros on them. Hmm. And uh, but I'm already working on them for like uh, four to five hours to repair them for all the crap he did with it. <laughs> so I had to break off all the shields. I had to uh, break off heads to get on the mold lines. He forgot and oh, yeah. well, it's it's not a very good uh, payment for an hour. I say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if better. anybody's ever done plague monks. Plague Monks are, in my experience, the worst modeled models by Games Workshop. They're the worst designed, worst carried out, because the mold lines, there are so many of them. Okay. It took me a day to get through 40 of them, of sitting there like 9 to 5, scraping off mold lines with an eye. Um, that's just a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. But at least to scrape them off, you actually didn't take any off. So I don't I don't know what you use. It's like um, perfect super glue. You can't take anything off without breaking it. That's awful. Ooh, yeah, super glue. You probably use plastic glue. Yeah. I hate plastic glue. Yeah, I have like this uh, chemical agent that dissolves plastic glue a little bit, so you it softens up the plastic, so you can only you can take it off. But it didn't work on this one. Mm. I don't know why. Pretty soon I'm going to attempt to uh, strip my Stegodon. That old metal one I've got, you might have seen. So I'm going to strip that soon. Okay. Repaint it. What do you God. use for stripping? Uh, I don't know yet. This is what I've been asking people. I've been trying to find out what the best... Uh... Is, it, is it metal? Yeah, it's metal. Which paints do you use? I used the Citadel paints from a while ago. So, Games Workshop? Yeah, Games Workshop paints. I have like a perfect thing, but I don't know if you have it in America. Which... Uh, we're not American. Oh, British. You're British too? Yeah, okay. well, we're in the UK. Oh, okay. Um, wait a sec. So, while he's gone, I was recommended Pine Soul from Rubicon. He recommended me that. 
Um, other people have recommended me Dettol, nail varnish remover. I mean, if it's metal, you can just go straight ahead and use like paint thinner. Yeah. Because that's not going to. The, these alternative ones are not going for plastic. Like for plastic, I use Dettol. It's really, really, really rare. Still coming dead off for 24 hours, scrub it with a paintbrush, come spray off. But I mean, for metal, I just use paint in it, or like wax to it. Mm, I think we've got some of that right here. Uh, there's like this stuff here. Um, <laughs> this is a um, hand sterilizer you use in hospitals. Oh, yeah, the, the alcohol stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's like alcohol. I don't know if it's alcohol based, it's like for disinfection. It's yeah. called sterilium. I don't know if you got it. It's like blue stuff. Um, you put it in like for 12 minutes and the paint flakes off completely. Wow. It's aw awesome. It's it's a little miracle. The only thing uh, it won't take off is the groundation. So if you have like a bad model with very thick groundation, it won't take that off. But the paint just flakes off. Googling that right now. Yeah. Huh. Googling sterilium. Sterilium, yeah. Yeah. Shopping. Tesco don't sell it. Nowhere sells it. Well, yeah, I found the exact bottle. It's actually pretty cheap. It's very cheap. Yeah, it's like um, I don't know, five euros for uh, half a liter. Mm. A little bit more expensive. Well, where, where I'm looking at, I'm sure you could buy in a in a store and get it cheaper than what it's saying here, but yeah. Hmm. I'll uh, keep that in mind. That's really awesome. Right, guys, I think I've got some editing to do. Yeah. So, if I, I want to get this report out today, I best go. So, I'll see you later. Yeah, I think right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut the screen now, so. Alright, see you all. Bye. See you later. All right, so I think I'm going to wrap this up now. Cheers for okay. joining me, dude. Have a good night. Yeah, Bye. you too, bro. Later. See you later, everybody.